you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that black subscribe button really does help our audience grow. really does help our channel grow really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Tuesday was just an awesome night of college basketball. It was just a great night. It felt important. And I would argue there was no game that was more important then what the game that was played 9 p.m. Eastern, ironically, again, between two unranked opponents as Arkansas traveled to Kentucky to Rupp Arena. And here is why it is important, because while both of these teams had a ton of hype going into the season, neither of them has both of them have struggled throughout the year. Now, Arkansas has been more injury related Kentucky. They just can't figure out their lineups. But this was a big game because. This was a game featuring two teams that are very much right now in early February on the bubble. Now, in the big picture, I'm not that worried about them. But right now, today, this second, here's what you need to know coming into Tuesday. Joe Lenardi updates his brackets. Nobody knows more about brackets than Joe Lenardi. He had each of these teams in the last eight into the field. In other words, he does the last four in, and then he does the next four in. They were both in that next four. So neither of these teams is anything close to an NCAA tournament guarantee. And if you watch the game on Tuesday for at least a half, it felt very close, very competitive. It actually felt like a tournament game because there was so much at stake for both teams, back and forth, up and down, defense, contesting this, that, big game, whatever. Unfortunately, if you're a Kentucky fan, Arkansas comes out in the second half, completely dominates. They run away from Kentucky in Rupp Arena. Final score, 88 to 73. And I know I say that the more interesting story is often in the losing locker room. We're going to have to talk about Kentucky in a second, because to me, Kentucky is a very interesting story. I don't know if they're more interesting than Arkansas, though. And as I look at this game from the Arkansas perspective, I just got one question for you, baby. Can anything stop the big pig invasion? Can anything stop the big pig invasion? If you're watching on YouTube, T-shirts available. Just showed you the T-shirt. It looks good. I'm not going to wear it because I got to sell it to you. But can anything stop the Big Pig Invasion? Plenty of T-shirts available at AaronTorresOnline.com slash merchandise. Also a link in the show description. But what a win for Arkansas. And so when it comes to why did Arkansas win this game, why were they so dominant, I think it ultimately comes down to two words. I think it comes down to Eric Musselman. I think it comes down to he is, if he's not the best coach in college basketball, listen, he doesn't have the resume of Bill Self. He doesn't have the resume of Eric Musselman, Tom, or uh, of of John Calipari, Tom Izzo, whatever. But right now, this second, especially late in the year, there is not really a coach outside of maybe Bill Self that I trust more to have his teams ready to go than Eric Musselman. And when I look at this game, a couple things stand out. One, they were the better prepared, better ready to go team. They came out on the road off of a tough game against South Carolina that they easily could have lost. And they were kind of the aggressor from the beginning. It's it's crazy because sometimes, you know, guys and girls, I think you guys and girls know, I try to watch as much as I can. I think I have a good feel for how these games are going to go down. And when I thought about this game, I said, Kentucky's playing well. They've won a bunch of games. You know, Shibway's playing pretty well, even though he struggled against Colin Castleton on on, on, uh, Saturday against Florida. But it wasn't that way at all. They were the better prepared team, they being Arkansas, better adjustments in the game. That is definitively on the coaching staff. Two, I think it speaks a lot to how this roster was put together in the spring. I've talked about it before, but it's worth reiterating here. All spring long, Arkansas fans told me, do we have too many guys? Is there enough? Blah, 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 blah. What are we doing? Why do we have 13 scholarship players? Well, we saw throughout this season and we saw on Tuesday night why it's so important. Nick Smith Jr. is out, and we'll talk about him maybe coming back in a minute. Trevin Brazil coming out uh, is out. He's not coming back this season. That's two first-rounders. If anybody else lost that, the season would be over. But Arkansas, because of the way they've recruited, because of the way that they've built depth, they have been able to withstand this. Now, it's been a struggle. It's been an adjustment. The coaching staff has talked about it publicly. It hasn't been easy. But when you look at that floor on Tuesday night, a couple things stand out. One, Anthony Black was the best player on the floor. 
And I don't think he gets enough credit for how good he has been at Arkansas this year. Now, part of it might be because Nick Smith came in with all the hype and, and Nick Smith is a constant point of conversation for Arkansas. I get that. He was the number one high school player in America, according to some recruiting services. He hasn't played. Everybody wants to know what his future is. But Anthony Black has been awesome this year. You know that Anthony Black is averaging 13 points, five rebounds, and four and a half assists as a true freshman point guard in the SEC? That is incredible, and he's probably not getting enough credit. And on Tuesday night, he was the best player on the floor for Arkansas. 19 points, four rebounds, five assists, and how about this? Five steals in that game. Two or three of those steals came early in the second half when the game was competitive. I don't know if they win if they don't get the momentum from Anthony Black on the defensive end. So he was great. Ricky Council did what Ricky Council always does, 20 points for them. And I thought the difference, you know what the difference was. And this speaks to roster building, roster management. I talked about it in the spring. Last year, Arkansas lost in the Elite Eight to Duke. And in that game, Duke had a guy named Mark Williams who was dominant. Seven foot one center, rebounding, shot blocking, altering shots. Arkansas had no answer for him. And one thing I know about Coach Moss following him through the years, when he gets beat by something, he makes sure that never happens again. So why do I bring it up? It's because on Tuesday night, two of the players that he brought in, because he said we didn't have enough size, enough length, enough rim protection, enough athleticism at the rim last year, he goes out and gets a pair of transfer twins from Rhode Island. McKellen, Makai, Mitchell. Well, they were the difference in that game. Anthony Black was the best player, but the Mitchell twins were the difference. 19 points, 13 rebounds, five blocks in that game, limiting Oscar Sheepway. How about this? To seven points and seven rebounds, which led to the Arkansas victory. And so that's what happened on Tuesday. But now let's talk big picture for a minute. Because I hate to say it, but Eric Musselman, Coach Muss, is doing it again. And one thing about Coach Moss, I've told you from the beginning, there isn't a better late-season coach in college basketball right now, okay? I bring up this stat. This stat blows me away. It's it's one of those crazy stats. I did kind of an Instagram reaction on, on Tuesday night. But you know how, like, when Tom Brady retired and you'd see all these crazy stats about him and you'd say, there's no way that can be true? And then it was. Well, that's kind of like Coach Muss. How about this first stat on Arkansas the last three Februarys? So February 2021, February 2022, February 2023, and it's early, but obviously this February as well. Did you know that Arkansas is 15 and 1 in the month of February in 2021, 2022, and 2023? That is insane. And that is what Arkansas has done over the last three years. And so why I always had faith in this team. It's funny. Every time I said something nice, every time I said I'm not worried about this team struggling at various points, you all know what I heard. Torres, you love Muss. Torres, you love Mussman. Torres, you never say anything bad about Mussman. No, 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 no. Let's get one thing clear. I love my wife. I love my dog. Maybe not in that order, but that's neither here nor there. Don't don't, don't share that with the wife, okay? I, I, I don't love basketball coaches, but how can you not respect a man that is now 15 and 1? In the last three Februaries in college basketball, the goal is to have your team playing its best late in the season when it matters the most. And that is exactly what this guy did does. And this is why I was never worried. Because one thing I could say about this coaching staff, and I know people that have worked there and are no longer there and all that good stuff. And the one thing they say about Coach Muss, he is a constant tinkerer. In other words, If things aren't going well, he's going to keep messing around with lineups and rotation and roster and this and that until he figures it out. Last year, it took until February to put a kid named Trey Trey Wade, I almost called him Trey Lance, not the quarterback for the 49ers, uh, Trey Wade into the starting lineup. Trey Wade was awesome. Arkansas went on a run that ended in the Elite Eight. This year. It feels as though there's more of an emphasis on putting the Mitchell twins on the court together or playing them more overall. And it has led to another February run for Arkansas. Did you know? So I just told you they're 15 and one in February, each of the last three years, Arkansas is quietly on a five game win streak in the sec. Now they did lose the big 12 sec challenge game at Baylor. Baylor's awesome. By the way, Arkansas was up at halftime in that game. And I would add the game, the, the their last sec loss 
to Missouri. I watched that game. That was the 56 foul game that Arkansas probably should have won because they had a bad foul call on Devo Davis late in that game. And so I bring it up because Coach Muss is doing it again. Quietly has won five in a row in SEC play. They probably really should be on a seven-game win streak at this point. But when they started slow, I told you not to worry, and that's exactly what will happen. Now, I'll say a couple things as we wrap on Arkansas. We turn our attention to Kentucky. From the Arkansas perspective, I will say, schedule does get tougher. I don't think they're going undefeated in February this year. They still have to play at A&M, at, uh, at Tennessee, and at Alabama, and they still have Kentucky at home. How about this? Three of their last four. Now, th- three of their next four are at home, but three of their last four. At Tennessee, at Bama, Kentucky at home. You talk about a loaded back half of the schedule. That is it. But here's the silver lining maybe for Arkansas fans. Seems like Nick Smith might be coming back. Now, I have no personal intel on this, and I'll be blunt. Everything that I kind of heard up until yesterday was, I don't think we're going to see him. But Jimmy Dykes, who lives in Fayetteville and is around that program, kept saying on the broadcast, Nick Smith is coming back. We expect him back. We'll see him sooner rather than later. If Jimmy Dykes says it, I don't think there's a more reputable person to talk Arkansas athletics. He, of course, formerly coached there. I don't think there's a more reputable person to talk Arkansas athletics than Jimmy Dykes. So, schedule is going to get tougher. They're probably not going undefeated in February, but this team is peaking at the right time, and here is the scary part. They might be getting, frankly, one of the top players in college basketball back soon.